Did you know that the world's fastest supercomputer, Fugaku, has an astounding 7.3 million core processor? This highlights the incredible complexity and sophistication of processor architecture. Diving into the world of computer science and engineering, we encounter the concept of processor architecture. This refers to the design and structure of a central processing unit, or CPU, often considered the brain of a computer. It's responsible for executing instructions and performing calculations, acting as the core that powers our digital world. Processor architecture encompasses several key components. First, we have the Instruction Set Architecture, or ISA, which outlines the set of instructions a CPU can understand and execute. It's like the CPU's language, defining the words it can understand and the sentences it can form. Then there are the registers, small fast storage locations within the CPU. Think of them as the CPU's notepad, used for temporary data storage and operations. The data path is another essential part, the highway of the CPU, where arithmetic and logic operations on data are performed. Last but not least is the control unit. This is the maestro of the CPU, managing the execution of instructions, coordinating data movement and control signals. There are two main types of ISA, Complex Instruction Set Computing, or CISC, where instructions can perform complex operations, reducing the number of instructions needed for a task, and Reduced Instruction Set Computing, or RESC, which focuses on a smaller, simpler set of instructions, often executed in a single clock cycle. Processor architecture thus is the blueprint of a CPU, defining its capabilities and limitations. It's the invisible hand that guides the operations of a computer, enabling us to send emails, stream videos, design skyscrapers, and even explore distant galaxies. So next time you use a computer, take a moment to appreciate the marvels of processor architecture. Just like a well-organized team is more productive, a well-organized processor can perform tasks more efficiently. Let's dive into the fascinating world of processor organization. This concept refers to how the various components of a central processing unit, or CPU, are interconnected and work together to execute instructions. Think of it as the blueprint of a CPU's internal workings. At the heart of this organization lies the control unit. This is the maestro of the CPU, decoding instructions and generating control signals that manage the flow of data between different components. It's the control unit that ensures that all parts of the processor are singing from the same hymn sheet, so to speak. Then we have the Arithmetic Logic Unit, or ALU. This is the part of the CPU where the magic happens, where arithmetic and logic operations on data are performed. The ALU is like the engine room of the CPU, crunching numbers and making logical decisions. Next up, we have Registers. These are small, high-speed storage locations within the CPU, used for storing intermediate data and addresses. Think of them as the CPU's short-term memory, holding the data that's currently being worked on. And let's not forget about cache memory. This is a small, high-speed memory used to temporarily store frequently accessed instructions and data. The cache memory serves as a buffer between the CPU and the main memory, ensuring that the CPU can access the data it needs as quickly as possible. Now let's talk about the fetch decode execute cycle and pipeline architecture. In this cycle, instructions are fetched from memory, decoded and then executed. The pipeline architecture divides this execution into stages, with each stage performed by a different segment of the CPU. This allows multiple instructions to be processed simultaneously, much like an assembly line in a factory. Processor organization is fundamentally about ensuring that all the different components of the CPU work together harmoniously. And that's a wrap on processor organization. Stay tuned for our next scene, where we'll explore the power of superscalar architecture. Imagine executing multiple instructions at once. That's the magic of superscalar architecture. Let's unravel the mysteries behind this powerful concept. At its core, a superscalar processor is all about speed and efficiency. It's designed to execute more than one instruction during a single clock cycle. How does it achieve this, you may ask? Well, the answer lies in its multiple execution units. These units are like separate lanes on a highway, allowing several instructions to be processed simultaneously rather than in a single file line. But what if the instructions don't arrive in the best order for parallel execution? This is where out-of-order execution comes into play, it's like a master juggler, rearranging the order of instructions as needed to keep all the execution units busy. 
So even if an instruction is stuck waiting for data, the CPU doesn't waste time idling. It just moves on to the next instruction on the list. Now, you might be wondering, how does the CPU keep track of all these instructions flying around in different orders? Well, it's all thanks to a clever feature called the reorder buffer. This acts like a traffic controller, ensuring that despite the out-of-order execution, the results are put back in the correct sequence. But of course, superscalar architecture isn't perfect. It comes with its own set of challenges. For instance, it requires a more complex processor design and control logic to handle multiple instructions and their dependencies. And then there's the issue of power consumption, with more execution units drawing more power. Despite these challenges, the benefits of superscalar architecture are hard to ignore. It's like having a team of workers, each with a specific task, operating in unison to complete a project faster than a single worker ever could. By maximizing parallelism, superscalar processors significantly boost processing speed and overall performance, making them a popular choice in today's high-speed computing world. Superscalar architecture, therefore, is about harnessing the power of parallelism to boost processing speed. Let's delve into the world of Very Long Instruction Word, or VLIW architecture, where multiple instructions are scheduled for parallel execution. This architecture is a fascinating journey into the depths of processor design, where efficiency and performance are paramount. VLIW architecture is a unique approach to processor design that allows for the execution of multiple instructions simultaneously. This is achieved by scheduling several instructions in parallel during the compile time phase, rather than at runtime. The result is an architecture that is highly efficient, as it is able to maximize the use of processor resources. At the heart of VLIW architecture is the concept of the instruction word. This is essentially a collection of instructions that are bundled together and executed simultaneously. Each instruction word is very long, hence the name, because it contains multiple instructions that are executed in parallel. The key advantage of VLIW architecture is its ability to exploit parallelism in instruction execution. By scheduling multiple instructions for simultaneous execution, VLIW processors can achieve higher performance levels than traditional single instruction architectures. However, like all architectures, VLIW comes with its own set of challenges. One of the most significant is the complexity of the compiler, which must be able to effectively schedule instructions for parallel execution. This requires sophisticated algorithms and a deep understanding of the program's structure and behavior. Another challenge is dealing with dependencies between instructions. If one instruction depends on the result of another, they cannot be executed in parallel. The compiler must be able to accurately identify these dependencies and schedule instructions accordingly. Despite these challenges, VLIW architecture has proven to be an effective solution for many high-performance computing applications. Its ability to exploit parallelism makes it a powerful tool for tasks that require high levels of computational performance. In the grand tapestry of processor design, VLIW architecture represents an innovative approach to maximizing performance and efficiency. By scheduling multiple instructions for parallel execution, it is able to take full advantage of the processing power of modern CPUs. VLI architecture thus further extends the realm of parallelism in processor architecture. One of the most common metrics for measuring CPU performance is clock speed. But what does it really signify? Let's dive in. Clock speed, measured in Hertz, is a key concept that plays a fundamental role in determining the performance of a CPU. It's akin to the heartbeat of a processor dictating the rate at which it can execute instructions. Imagine a metronome ticking away, each tick representing a cycle. Now imagine that each tick or cycle is an opportunity for the CPU to perform a task. That's essentially what clock speed is, the number of cycles per second during which a CPU can execute instructions. The higher the clock speed, the more instructions the CPU can execute per second. So, a processor with a clock speed of 2 GHz can perform 2 billion cycles per second. That's a lot of instructions. However, it's vital to note that clock speed isn't the be-all and end-all of CPU performance. While a higher clock speed does mean a CPU can execute more instructions per second, other factors also play a role. These include the type of instruction set architecture, the efficiency of the processor's organization, and the use of techniques like pipelining and parallel processing. In essence, clock speed is just one piece of a complex puzzle. It's like a car's engine power. Yes, a car with more horsepower can go faster. 
but the overall performance also depends on factors like the car's weight, aerodynamics, and the driver's skills. So when you're considering CPU performance, don't just look at the clock speed. Consider the bigger picture. How does the processor architecture support the execution of instructions? How effectively does the processor organization manage data flow and control signals? Understanding processor architecture and organization is not just about knowing the components or types of architectures, but also about understanding key concepts like clock speed that fundamentally affect performance.